Joe, you're going to be on the hot seat right away because I know everybody's, they, some people have never even seen a plaintiff attorney in their life. They're like, holy crap, one actually came onto our show and they want to talk to us. So we're excited to have you, but let's, let's hit this right off the bat. So Werner and Werner, we all know the trucking company. Yeah. Um, they had a verdict against them. And just from a high level, I'm going to give you guys very quick points. If you want to read the whole thing, it's in my feed or one of my friends here will probably repost the article. But it's a major verdict. I think it was like $40 million. A woman in her pickup truck was driving along the road, highway, on the other side of the highway where the Werner truck was coming. She lost oh. control because of icy conditions. She spun through the median. She hits a Werner truck. Werner truck wasn't driving fast, wasn't doing anything reckless, no citations. Huge verdict against Werner. So Joe, everybody in the industry, except for me, said, what the hell happened here? And I think we need you to give us some guidance. You don't have to talk about specifically, because this isn't your case, you don't have to talk about specifically this lawsuit, but this happens quite a bit, where truckers feel like they didn't do anything wrong, and then they're getting slapped with a big verdict. And everybody's blindsided in the industry kind of saying, what? That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that case is, a, is an interesting case. And, you know, and obviously you, you pitched it the way you pitched it. I think the plaintiff's lawyer in that case, the way he pitched it was this was a trainee. He was a trainee who was relatively early in a training program who was unsupervised, driving a just-in-time load on, in icy conditions that were icy for a long time. He was going over 60 miles an hour um, in, in, in a location where there were, there were around the area where this happened, there were over 100 crashes. Um, and Werner, Werner testified that they knew about the weather conditions, never informed the, the driver, the driver supervisor about them, and, um, and did not, didn't, and, and made no accommodations for the just in time load. And then testified un, testified in front of the jury that they've learned absolutely nothing from this from this wreck and that they weren't going to do anything different uh, as a result of what happened in this wreck uh, despite the fact that one one child was killed another child was was horribly brain injured mom and dad were both injured mom was injured and another and another child was was really seriously injured so when you hear the facts from that perspective you can at least hopefully understand you may still disagree with the result and say, well, that doesn't change that mom drove through the median. But a, a like lot of times- the vehicle. What the fuck was she doing on the road? You know everybody's saying that, but then you could turn around and say to the trucking company, what the fuck were you doing on the road? Exactly. And so look, I'm not here to get, I wasn't at the trial. I'm, I'm very familiar with the case and I was familiar with it before it went to trial. Uh, because what you'll learn if you ask me is we're all very connected on our side. And most yep. of the big things that you see happen are really a concerted effort by a lot of people who are working together to to try to bring about change that case was was um was selected essentially as a case to try to bring about change in the industry that has to do with making sure that drivers are given appropriate information about weather conditions if and 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 that companies who have the capacity to do it are monitoring weather and pushing that information out from a safety perspective I look at every case I have from the perspective of the driver. Mm -hmm. If I'm a driver in that situation, I sure as hell don't want to be involved, whether I'm responsible or not. I don't want to be involved in a freaking crash that I have to live with for the rest of my life that somebody died and got maimed in. I think drivers deserve to get all the information that they can, especially if the motor carriers have them. By the way, in that case, um, the, the, I believe that the reason the verdict went so high is not because of Werner or the driver. I believe the way that case was defended by the lawyers defending them uh, drove that drove that verdict. You know, they had they had their they, they had everybody deny that there was even bad weather out there. Despite there were fourteen oh, witnesses, wow. there were fourteen witnesses who testified uh, about the the weather conditions. There was national weather advisories and warnings in place at the time and had been for twelve hours, and they're denying the obvious now. Now, some of you, if you lay aside for a second the, the bend toward the trucking side, which, by the way, I share with you, I, it pisses me off when, when we have a, a small group of people within this incredible industry that gives the industry a black eye. But, but sometimes, 
you know, sometimes when, when, when people, when, when people do things wrong, you got to stand up and, 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 and address it. You got to be open. Uh, and here's a big one. And there's a lot of my motor carrier friends are really not going to like this. It's reconsider the way you're compensating your drivers. Mm. In what other industry in the United States are we allowed to pay a worker by productivity and then limit the amount of productivity that that worker is capable of accomplishing in a day? Jeez. So um, that's the that's number. Sharecropping. Yeah, I feel like we should have a whole show on. On I didn't expect them to. Brendan, do you've either been reading me or I've been reading you. I've been saying for almost 15 years that all the incentives in the industry push all all anything that can go wrong gets pushed to the person who can least afford it, the driver. Mm -hmm. And 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 uh, when you pay people the way you pay them, they become it's it's a new kind of slavery. I mean, it's just indentured servitude. It is. Yeah. You talk about a driver turnover, you know, or I'm sorry, we talk about a driver shortage. And again, I'm, I'm at risk in my marketplace here, but do we have a driver shortage or do we have a turnover problem? Mm -hmm. Are we not keeping drivers behind the wheel? We're feeling good on a good day at 95% turnover. And when, at what point in this process are we going to ask ourselves as motor carriers, why can't we keep people in the chair yep damn we need to have a whole show on that driver I'm in. pay driver turnover and I mean, because what they just said is true think about it you that's what i said at the beginning of the show we, we oh the driver is so important oh the driver is the life of our, of our company oh the driver is so amazing and you hear all these companies say that and then when you look at how you truly treat the driver you realize you treat the driver like shit treat but, you, you put you you put them in a shoebox you make them live in a shoebox and shower in a public place. The co mm. companies, the companies that don't, the companies that don't treat them like shit don't have driver shortages. They don't. Yeah. Mm. They don't. That's a good point, Joe. Why'd you guys dropping bombs at right at the end of the show?